Comes the weekend, our long national nightmare is over. It's time to find out what crummy movies are coming out this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael Snyder. Hi, Michael. Hi, Alex. And, you know, we always hope against hope we're going to get some good stuff. And, you know, they're starting to pile up. You know, it's the fall season. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Hotel Transylvania 2. Well, this is the uh, the sequel to the animated family comedy Hotel Transylvania, where Dracula and the Wolfman and the rest run a hotel. And uh, and uh, it's uh, by Jendi Tartakovsky. And, and uh, that's the guy who did Samurai Jack. So, it, 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 you know, that had to be good. Eh, it was all right. Oh, let's see. Transylvania 2 didn't make it. Why didn't I review it? Why didn't I show up? 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Good luck getting me to wake up at 8 to go see a movie at 10 a.m. Not going to happen. Okay, moving right along. It could be good, could be crappy. Wait, Adam Sandler plays Dracula? <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. Um, the Intern also opens this weekend. It's all about a, uh, a successful retired uh, business owner and widower who gets an internship at a fashion website run by uh, a young woman. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. It's Robert De Niro playing some kind of frothy comedy opposite Anne Hathaway. You mean it was it was screened against The Martian, a movie I really wanted to see? Oh, sorry. Can't review The Intern today either. Okay. As to what we can review, a very good film. This film is already winning awards at festivals. 99 Homes. Uh, a very topical drama concerns a father who's struggling to get back the home that was taken from him and his family uh, by working for the real estate broker who kicked him out. And it stars Andrew Garfield, Michael Shannon, and Laura Dern. Uh, this is a fine film. Smart, sharp, complex drama about the devastation wrought by the 2008 housing crisis when countless homeowners across America faced foreclosure and eviction. Uh, the filmmaker, Raman Barani, who also co-wrote this thing and directed it, uh, pits Im unemployed good guy construction worker Dennis, uh, played by Garfield, and his mom, played by Laura Dern, against vicious and efficient real estate speculator Mike Carver, played by Shannon. Uh, this guy sent by the bank to a victim from their property after they failed to make a series of payments on the refinanced family home. They've been there forever. And Carver brings cops and his own hired muscle to make sure the house is vacated for him to buy on the cheap and presumably flip at a massive profit. He does it. This is how he makes his money. Uh, the, the Florida setting is still totally, uh, you know, sunbaked and, and deceptively balmy. And, uh, and the Garfield character uh, is faced with this horrible challenge. What does he do? Does he uh, live in the motel with his mom or does he actually take the offer to work with Carver? Uh, so it's all about kind of, you know, is it the, if you follow the angel on your shoulder or the devil on your shoulder? Okay, this is a disheartening and still totally relevant situation, and the movie it works. Garfield is an appropriate mix of desperate and noble. Dern is harassed and careworn, and Shannon, who uh, just gets off on playing creeps, I can kind of tell, is chilling and quite real as the cold angel of economic death who swoops down on the unfortunate or the luckless. I thought 99 Homes was painful to watch, but absolutely compelling. So it gets the big thumbs up from me. The Green Inferno is the latest film by uh, new gore master Eli Roth. And this guy is totally inspired by um, Italian um, cannibal cinema. There's like a whole genre of films from Italy that involve cannibalism. And The Green Inferno is very clever in how it gets to the point. Uh, cannibals in the Amazon endangering liberal American college kids who are trying to save these indigenous people from greedy developers who are tearing up this previously virgin uh, jungle in South America. Uh, this uh, should have been horrifyingly bad, but instead it was just horrifyingly creepy and, and scary. And uh, if it's something you can stomach, pardon the expression, um, I think Eli Roth's The Green Inferno works uh, for what it was, what it wants to be, and what it uh, what it ends up being, you know, it's definitely not for everyone. It, it, it's gory, and people will freak out uh, and who aren't prepared for what they're going to see. But you know, I'm I, I was on board. Maybe there's something wrong with me, but that's a, a story for another uh, episode. Uh, Mississippi Grind. Mississippi Grind is a freewheeling road movie about a talented but luckless gambler 
gambler whose fortunes change when he meets a younger gambler and they travel to a high stakes poker game in New Orleans. That's the basic capsule. Uh, Ryan Reynolds plays the uh, you know the young and successful guy. Ben Mendelsohn plays the struggling. Uh, sad sack character. Sienna Miller and Alfred Woodard are in the film. Uh, they're they're pretty wonderful. And the CB world of like the vagabond tournament to tournament poker players got brought to the screen in a sort of darker version of like what we've seen in Matt Damon's Rounders or Steve McQueen's The Cincinnati Kid. Yeah, this is darker and and more depressing. Uh, a very dark ride, literally, is the two, two principals bond and go on the road to in New Orleans. Um, I thought it was very well done. I thought it was, you know, a good piece of work directed by Ryan Fleck and Anna Bowden, co-written by those guys as well. And it's uh, in limited release, and you can probably eventually get it on video, and you'll be able to enjoy it because it's a character study and pretty intimately done. Um, I I would recommend Mississippi Grind. Uh, Ashby uh, is a movie that echoes the naive young protege uh, and often... Uh, reluctant older mentor relationships at the heart of uh, comic films like Rushmore and St. Vincent, uh, both of which, by the way, featured Bill Murray as the old guy. Ashby features, uh, of all people, uh, the uh, the very entertaining Mickey Rourke uh, as the old guy. And the young guy is Nat Wolf, who's been in a few films and kind of an up-and-comer. And he's a uh, new, uh, a bright, eager uh, high school senior who's new in in town who has an assignment to uh, interview an essay about an older person. So he asks his neighbor, uh, an elderly guy, for, to his, uh, for, from his point of view, uh, to speak with him. And it turns out that the guy, Ashby, played uh, again by uh, Mickey Rourke, is a former black ops assassin facing what could be uh, what we could call his expiration date. Uh, this is not great. Uh, written and directed by Tony McNamara, but it has some good character moments. I was sort of entertained by it. Um, Emma Roberts plays this sort of nerdy girl that the uh, Nat Wolf character gets involved with. Mom is played by Sarah Silverman, and uh, she's on a bit of a role in that regard. She has another movie coming up called uh, I Smile Back, where she plays a mom role, and she's good in this thing. Um, Again, this will uh, translate well to video if you're interested in it, Uh, and I, uh, I was entertained. Uh, is it great? No. Is it uh, was it worth my time? I enjoyed it. Um, okay, let's wrap up with Stonewall. Okay, this is a drama about a young man's political awakening and coming of age amid the tumult of the 1969 Stonewall riots, the violent clash that people say kicked off the gay rights movement in New York City. Uh, it's directed by, are you ready for this, Roland Emmerich of Independence Day, White House Down, Day After Tomorrow, Stargate, and the first and crappier American version of Godzilla. He, he must have meant well when he, uh, when he decided to make this drama built around the Stonewall riots. This is a crucial moment, even a tipping point in the gay lib movement, but this soapy endeavor is more about a handsome, earnest scholar-athlete kicked out of his Midwestern home by God-fearing parents for being a homosexual than it is about the events surrounding the Stonewall Inn. This uh, gay bar in Greenwich Village was a magnet for police raids, and, and uh, he gets caught in the middle of it. Uh, the kid is accepted at Columbia and, you know, kicked out of his house, so he didn't finish his senior year. And uh, he heads to New York, tries to get by on the streets until he can get the credits to clear his way into college. So homeless, he ends up hanging with a group of local hustlers and drag queens. So you got your coming of age, you got your awakenings, romance, and then your riots. Uh, one of the great things about this movie uh, is is a very good performance by Johnny Beauchamp, who is in, uh, he is also in uh, Penny Dreadful, uh, and he plays uh, the sort of drag uh, queen slash hustler that gets enamored of our uh, Danny, um, who, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, he's the center of the story, and, and so you're more involved with him and then, than the colorful people in the, in the streets. You know, the, the community is still battling for equal rights, and the world's more accepting and welcoming, but uh, this movie is sort of dull, and I wish it had done a better job of depicting the watershed moment. Jeremy Irvine uh, plays Danny. He's solid. You get supporting work from Ron Perlman and Jonathan Rhys Myers. I was disappointed in Stonewall. What do you got? Anything video-wise? Anything on TV? Are you digging anything out there? Well, let's see here. Doctor Who was kind of okay. A little, okay. little darker. Um, let me see here. Do you like Limitless? I haven't watched it yet. Uh, not bad. Well, not bad isn't good enough, is it? Well, it depends. Some of these things, uh, start, I mean, not, uh, not bad is, is not good enough. 
you know, to, for it to, to suddenly make it part of your, you know, your viewing habits. Uh, well, Muppets, I... Muppets, eh. Uh, let me see here. What else? Um, mm, that's about it. You know? I'm giving The Muppets and Limitless, which is based on the Bradley Cooper movie and features Cooper in the same role as the character, a supporting player in the show. I thought that both of those shows, Muppets and Limitless, had potential. I'm going to actually give them another couple of episodes before I make my decision as to whether to stick or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, it's not much. To tell you the truth, I, I, I don't think the new season is... In fact, the ratings for the new season are quite low, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just not... It's not It's not a good year so far. You know, there's not that gotcha show. You know, the one that makes me want to watch it. So, You know, I'm actually looking forward to something on sci-fi that's supposed to debut, I think, in December called The Expanse. Other than that, I'm kind of indifferent to everything and waiting for a few yeah, I mean, shows. Gotham, I Gotham, I think, is still a, gr a very good show. Uh, and I'm looking forward to Flash and uh, Green Arrow. It's Green Arrow this year. Uh, and um, let me see Wait, here. What? Legends of Tomorrow, the third and, and, in their and, and, trilogy. And Supergirl, I saw. And it look, it's terrific. I think Supergirl's very good. Uh, and what did you say? What one did you say? Legends of Tomorrow, which is... Yeah, uh, well, that's still a ways away. I think that's next year uh, uh well there you go I, i'm gonna watch agents of shield you know i love the superhero stuff i think and, Ag um, i think agents of shield has pretty well jumped the shark i think orphan black i can't even watch anymore uh you know a lot of these shows have good a good season two seasons in them and then that's it you're just so fickle you're so fickle i'm not fickle i mean i what? you know i I've got, I'm 75. I don't have that many years left. If I'm going to waste some watching <laughs> television, it better be good television. All right, granted, I'm so um, shocked and happy that you did recognize that the uh, season premiere of Doctor Who was actually pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was It was uh, very good, actually. We'll see where it goes, but yeah. uh, if any fans uh, uh, are... Uh, you know, our regular viewers of the show, a big bomb was dropped at the very start of it, and it, 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 I thought it was very effective. What what big bomb? You know, Davros. Oh, yeah, what? He's been on before. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. So you know who the character is, and what they did was kind of surprise you with where uh, they launched the uh, the episode. I, I was very excited by it. So anyway, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah no, forward. they did launch the episode well. I mean, you know, it, it, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good start. Now let's see if they maintain it. You know. Yep. Which I seriously doubt, but we'll see. Yep. You know, I want to be oh. pleasantly surprised. Oh, you naysayer, you negative Nancy. Right, well, man. we'll see what we come up with next yeah, week. Maybe yeah. we'll have uh, better yeah. films. I, I saw The Martian, and I'm not going. Uh, uh, I'm not cheating by saying it's pretty good. Okay. Hey, that's it. Where can they find you? Um, at uh, Twitter at Culture Blaster and on Facebook at Michael Snyder's Culture Blast. Uh, like it, uh, link to uh, episodes and segments with Alex and I. And, you know, yeah. we'll see you next time. And go on to Roku. He's there too. Thanks, Michael. You bet. See you next week. And there's more Gabnet coming right up. <laughs>